In this video, I'm going to go through section 3.1, which is the relationship between two quantitative variables, so two numeric values. Um, and they, it's, it's really just heavy on the vocab for this. So being able to identify what the explanatory variable and what the response variable is in a problem, and then how to describe the relationship between these two quantitative variables using direction, form, strength, and unusual observations. So I'm just going to go through um, the vocab and then a little bit of examples in terms of the first one, so being able to identify explanatory variables, which are the independent variable, also known as the predictor variable. Um, it explains the variations in the response variable, so it's, it's the chicken before the egg, what comes first part that they were talking about in that intro video. So the explanatory var variable is always your x value. So if it's a graph, it's on your horizontal axis. The response variable is the dependent variable, which is your y variable. So that's always on your y axis. Um, it's the value, its value is predicted or its variation is explained by the explanatory variable. So we've got a couple examples of situations where we have a some kind of statistical study and we want to identify the explanatory and response variables. I was going to write them, but I'm just going to color code highlight. So I'm going to highlight the explanatory variables in yellow and the response in the blue. So a public speaker is a public speaking teacher has developed a new lesson that she believes decreases student anxiety in public speaking situations more than the, her old lesson. So the explanatory variable is the thing that has to come first. So she has to give her new lesson first before she can decrease the student anxiety in public speaking situations, okay? So her new lesson is the explanatory variable and it's the student anxiety in public speaking situations is the response variable. Um, again, what comes first, she has to give the lesson first, then the anxiety, then monitor anxiety. The next one is a researcher believes that the origin of beans used to make a cup of coffee affects hyperactivity. And so you have to drink the coffee first before it can have an effect on you. So the origin of the beans used to make the cup of coffee or the origin of coffee beans um, would be the explanatory variable. That would be the Y variable. Then hyperactivity would be, sorry, I said that would be the Y variable. The explanatory variable is the X variable. Remember, there's a hint that it's there's an X in explanatory, so that can help you remember that. Um, so then hyperactivity would be the response to drinking that cup of coffee. So that would be our response variable. Again, the last thing was a bunch of visuals, and I've actually pasted them in, so I'll go through them a little bit more. Um, when we describe the relationship between two quanti quantitative variables, we must address direction. When we're addressing direction, we're looking at whether it's positive, negative, or if there's no, no clear direction. So if I have a linear graph and it's got a positive direction, that means the value should be increasing. If I have a linear graph, it should be decreasing. If it's negative, if there's no association, I can't draw an increasing or decreasing line that will fit the points. In terms of form, I want to know if it's linear or if it's curved or nonlinear. So if it's linear, the line that I can draw between the points is a straight line. If it's curved, it's not a straight line. Um, it, I'm going to look down here just to show you some curved, other curved lines. So notice that we can have a curved, like was drawn there, there could be curved positive and curved negative. Um, the next one is strength. We're going to use the term strong, moderate, and weak to, to describe strength. So a strong correlation means that the data values are all close together. Something that's moderate, they're more spread apart. Something that is weak, they're even more spread apart than that. The hard thing about strong, moderate, and weak is that there's no real clear indicators. Um, if I'm comparing three, it's easy to describe them as like a matching set. Um, however, I might have something that's weaker and think that the weak one is moderate. And so know that there's no hard, fast rule as to what is strong, what is moderate, what is weak. Um, if I'm looking at some nonlinear 
and I want to determine strength. So this one is strong and nonlinear. That's all that I can say about it because notice that it's negative to start and then positive at the end. So I'm not going to identify it as positive or negative. Versus the next one, I have strong and positive nonlinear because it's increasing, but it's also curved. And then I have a strong negative nonlinear because it's decreasing, but also curved. The very last situation is unusual observation. So is there an observation does th that does not fit the trend? So if I have this strong positive correlation, notice that these values are unusual, that they do not fit the trend. Um, I don't have any real set of correlation going on over here. However, I do have this data point that is not fitting the trend of the rest, which is clustered close to the origin. Then I have a negative nonlinear correlation, strong negative nonlinear. So that would mean that this point would be a um, unusual observation. Um, unusual observations we can think of as outliers. They're just going to use a, this term on scatter plots. Okay, so again, 3-1 was mostly vocab, and I just repeated some pictures from the lesson. Um, so that might be helpful to look at just as a refresher.